everyone, Sam here again with my new haircut. No more COVID haircut for me. And today we're going to be talking about chapter seven on trading perspectives. Uh, but first, as always, let's review our last lesson. So in chapter six, we talked about the take 10 problem solving steps to identify the conflict, brainstorm solutions, choose a solution and act, reflect on that, how that process and identify next steps. And we also learned take 10 principle number seven, every person has the right to choose how they will solve problems and express themselves. All right, so now let's get into chapter seven on trading perspectives. So to start, I want you all to number off from one to five. So go ahead and pause the video and do that now. And if you're at home, this part of the lesson isn't going to work. So just skip to the part where I start playing the video, okay? All right, so once you've numbered off from one to five, now we're going to be testing how well each group can do at memorizing the image I show you all. So I'm gonna ask you all to close your eyes and one group at a time is going to open your eyes for two seconds to view the image on the screen. Try to remember as many details as you can. Okay, so everyone close your eyes and when I call your number, open your eyes and don't say anything about what the picture is because it'll help the other teams, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start with number one and go through number five, all right? So everyone close your eyes. And number one, open your eyes. All right, close your eyes again. All right, no cheating now, nobody else peek. Number two, open your eyes. All right, eyes closed. Three, open your eyes. All right, close your eyes. Everybody eyes closed. Four, open your eyes. All right, everybody close your eyes. And five, open your eyes. All right, so now I'm gonna give you all five minutes to discuss as a class. What was the image an image of? So go ahead, five minutes, discuss, try to figure out what that image was and, and recall as many details as you can. Okay, so here is the actual image. Did you figure it out? So it was Obama throwing out the first pitch in his classic mom jeans, former President Barack Obama, that is. Uh, so I actually showed each group a different piece of this image. And if you all did a good enough job discussing and listening to each other, you actually had all the pieces necessary to describe the whole picture. But some of you might have just stuck to your story about the image that you saw and when you were certain that that's what the picture was of, and you probably only described part of the image accurately. So why did I have you do this? This activity was based on an ancient Indian parable called the blind man and the elephant. And we're gonna watch a video on that. So the video is a little silly, it's okay to laugh, but the artwork is actually really interesting and the parable has something really important to say. So here we go. There were six blind men who grew up in a village in India and the community kept them safe and shared with them many stories. The men were curious about many of the stories they heard but they were most curious about elephants. Based on the stories that each of them had heard, they argued about what elephants must be like. The community grew tired of these arguments and arranged for the men to visit the palace, where they were greeted by an old friend from their village who worked as a gardener on the palace grounds. Their friend led them to the courtyard. There stood an elephant. blind men stepped forward to touch the creature that was the subject of so many arguments. The first blind man reached out and touched the side of the huge animal. An elephant is smooth and solid like a wall, he declared. It must be very powerful. The second blind man put his hand on the elephant's limber trunk. An elephant is like a giant snake, he announced. The third blind man felt the elephant's pointed tusk. 
I was right, he decided. This creature is as sharp and deadly as a spear. The fourth blind man touched one of the elephant's four legs. What we have here, he said, is an extremely large cow. The fifth blind man felt the elephant's giant ear. I believe an elephant is like a huge fan, or maybe a magic carpet that can fly over mountains and treetops, he said. The sixth blind man gave a tug on the elephant's coarse tail. Why, this is nothing more than a piece of old rope. Dangerous indeed, he scoffed. The gardener led his friends to the shade of a tree. Sit here and rest for the long journey home, he said. I will bring you some water to drink. While they waited, the six blind men talked about the elephant. An elephant is like a wall, said the first blind man. Surely we can finally agree on that. A wall? An elephant is a giant snake, answered the second blind man. It's a spear, I tell you, insisted the third blind man. I'm certain it's a giant cow, said the fourth blind man. Magic carpet, there's no doubt, said the fifth blind man. Don't you see, pleaded the sixth blind man. Someone used a rope to trick us. Their argument continued and their shouts grew louder and louder. Wall, snake, spear, cow, carpet, rope. Stop shouting, called a very angry voice. It was the Raja, awakened from his nap by the noisy argument. How can each of you be so certain you are right? asked the ruler. The six blind men considered the question, and then, knowing the Raja to be a very wise man, they decided to say nothing at all. The elephant is a very large animal, said the Raja kindly. Each man touched only one part. Perhaps if you put the parts together, you will see the truth. Now, let me finish my nap in peace. All right, hope you all enjoyed that video as much as I did, but now let's get into what this parable is trying to teach us. So basically, what we ought to understand from this video is that perspective matters. Uh, each of us may see a piece of the truth from a particular perspective. And the crazy thing is, even though all of us might be saying completely contradictory things about an event, a story, or an object, the, we're all right in a certain way, in the sense that we're all describing the perspective that we have on that object or place or event or thing. As long as we're describing the thing honestly and accurately from our perspective, we're actually all right in a way. And I think this parable teaches us that, and also that even though we might want everyone to see things from our perspective, that would be actually be pretty bad for society because we would only see one piece of the picture. We would think that elephants were all just walls or exactly like snakes. Uh, when only one version of the truth is allowed in a society or even like in a group of people, we lose that opportunity to understand anything completely. And the last thing is because of those last two things, it's important to share perspectives with others and listen to each other's perspectives. Don't stamp out other perspectives just because you think they're wrong or they have a different perspective than you do. Instead, hear them out. And only then can we understand the full truth, the full elephant, if you will. <laughs> so now I want you to discuss these uh, ideas. So turn and talk with a partner, or if you're at home, just uh, write in your journals and answer these questions. So where have you seen something like this parable play out in your life or in the world where people had different pers perspectives on things and were disagreeing, but by getting together, maybe you could figure out the whole truth. And have you ever felt like there was a time when your perspective was erased or not valued by the people in a group or a community or in the world or something like that? So turn and talk for five minutes on these questions. Okay, and here I just want to point out something that you might have discussed in your groups. Um, so some of you might have brought up the idea of Donald Trump presenting alternative facts to the nation, as he calls them. So what we're saying here does not justify that kind of perspective. 
First of all, when he says things like that, he's often trying to substitute one view for another, like saying that that view is wrong and this is the correct view, which is not what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about how everyone's perspective is somewhat right or somewhat close to the truth. And secondly, presenting alternative facts that clearly aren't true is similar to saying like the elephant doesn't exist or feeling the elephant's trunk and saying it feels like a cell phone when that's clearly not the case. Um, just because we feel different parts of the elephant doesn't mean that the elephant isn't there or that we can describe the elephant however we want. Likewise, just because we all see things from a certain perspective doesn't mean that truth isn't really out there or that perspectives on truth can't be wrong. They can still be factually like incorrect or in, in fact, it's really important to learn how to describe your perspective accurately and honestly so that the whole group isn't thrown off by what you're saying about this certain perspective or event that you're talking about. And you, then the whole group would end up with like the wrong idea of the truth if you were sharing something that wasn't even true from your perspective. Okay, so we've talked a lot about sharing perspectives today, which is building off of chapter five on effective communication. And at this point, you might be thinking, sure, like this sounds great in theory, like training perspectives and empathy and discussing with others and all that, but it would never work in the real world that I live in, right? I'd get made fun of, the conflicts would get worse, or maybe you just don't think you have the courage to actually go out and do the things that we're talking about here. Uh, so we want to assure you that these strategies are actually tested and do actually work with kids your age and older, including myself. Uh, and we're going to call that take 10 principle number eight. Talk it out, walk it out, wait it out, and knowing when to get help can work in a violence-free zone. So we're not going to deny that reaching out to people you disagree with and sharing your feelings with others and facing conflicts head on is scary and awkward and difficult and embarrassing at times. But it certainly is all those things, even at my age. But I can promise you that doing these things really will improve your life and your relationships and your mental health. And it gets easier the more you do it especially after you see how well it works. So we encourage you just to get out there and, and do your best to try these strategies out and just see how you feel with them. Because again, they have been tested and proven to work by kids of all ages, including older, including myself. <laughs> so get out there and try it. All right, so let's review. So we learned today that each person's perspective is right in a sense, as long as they're describing it honestly and accurately. And it would be bad if everyone saw from one perspective because then you wouldn't get the whole version of the truth and everybody would be misled in a certain way because you're only looking at it from one perspective. And trading perspectives is really the only way to get at that full truth. And then we learn take 10 principle number eight, talk it out, walk it out, wait it out, and knowing when to get help can work in a violence-free zone. All right, so next time we're actually gonna continue with this chapter on trading perspectives because it's so important and we need to work on it a little bit more and it deserves another video. Uh, so in the next video, we're going to get into some specifics about how to trade perspectives peacefully and productively so that you can get to that full truth, that full elephant, right? And your challenge for next lesson related to that is during the next show or movie that you watch, pay attention to the villain. Who are they? Where did they come from? and why are they doing this bad thing? So pay attention to that next time you watch a show or a movie and see you next time.